Hello, welcome. So if you can hear me, if someone would just put in a chat window that you can hear me, and we'll go ahead and get started with the webinar today. Great. Okay. I'm glad to um, know that you can hear me. My name is Laura Bowman. I'm going to be leading, leading the first webinar of four on mobile payment processors. Uh, I'm sorry, our first webinar series um, for the spring, and this is our first topic is mobile payment processors. So if you joined us before in the fall, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm going to pull up a chat window. So you're actually... Um, or a live stream window, you're actually going to be able to see me today throughout the presentation and I'm going to demonstrate how mo mobile payment processors work and hold up and show you a few things. So I hope everyone can see me. Um, if you can't, please let me know in the chat window as well. Good, great. Yeah, you can see me. Thank you. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to the Mississippi Development Authority, the Entrepreneurship Center, that is John Brandon. He helped facilitate and do the registration for this webinar and market it. And then also the Mississippi Main Street Association. Hopefully many of you are listening at your local Main Street Association. If you do not already have the PowerPoint slides, then in the very top you're going to see it says Files for. If you click on Mobile Payment Processor Handout, you'll have the ability to download those files. Okay, let's get started then. So I must say I hate starting out with a disclaimer, but we're going to talk about a lot of specific companies and specific products today. So by no means am I advocating one over the other. I'm just letting you know what is out there and um, who provides these services. So we're going to start off by talking about WhatsApp debit or credit cards. We're going to look at different types of mobile payment processors and then also we're going to talk about accepting payments online through a website. But we will get more to this topic in our last topic in the series, in the webinar series, which is going to be how to build a website. So why set debit or credit cards? Well, to increase your sales would be number one and then to increase your customer base. And I know we've, we've probably noticed in many large chain stores now, like if you go into a home improvement store or even some large retail stores, there will be sales associates walking around with some type of mobile payment processor. Now, it might not be the ones we talk about today because it's going to be linked into their point of sale system in their store, but you're seeing that even large retailers are starting to use these types of payments where you can take them on the go. So no matter where you're at, you can accept a credit or a debit card on the go. Why are the big box retailers doing this? Because they're getting you on that impulse. You pick something up, they don't want you to put it down, they don't want you to think about it, so you don't want to miss out on that impulse buy from customers. And that's what we're going to talk about today on how you can capitalize on a sale and not miss out on those customers who only carry plastic. Now, I did some research and found some articles, and it said the average person carries eight different types of debit or credit cards. That's quite a lot. I don't know um, if you carry that many. I know I surely don't. So uh, the most recent study we could find showed that in 2011, 27% of all point-of-sale purchases were made with cash. And so they predict by 2017 that less than a quarter of um, a point of sales of sales right there on the spot will be made in cash. And so you can see that number is dropping and I think you'll find um, uh, this to be supported as well. Also, one in five consumers do not carry cash on them. And then more than 60% of consumers carry less than $20 in cash. So if you're only accepting checks or cash, then you could be missing out on a lot of potential customers or customers who might spend more money um, if, you, if you were to accept a credit or a debit card. So a few more numbers and we'll move on, but I just want to really um, emphasize how important it is and what the potential could be for your business for you to accept um, credit or debit cards, whether you do it through a mobile payment processor or in your storefront. 
So here's a little bit more recent data from Intuit, and we're going to talk about Intuit. They're the company that owns QuickBooks, and they have a mobile payment processor that 55% of the nation's 27 small businesses do not accept credit cards. Um, so hopefully that's credit. Some debit cards are not accepting those. And it's forecasted that by 2018, 13% of point of sale purchases will be made by mobile point of sale payments. So you're going to see these mobile payment processors start to grow. And we're going to talk about now what is a mobile payment processor. A mobile payment processor is a device that you're going to hook into your phone, your iPad, your tablet, some type of device that is mobile that you can take with you. And so you can see the two that we're going to talk about today are PayPal and Square. These are two of the most popular um, services that are out there on the market. We're also going to talk about two more, um, Intuit, GoPayment, and then PayAnywhere.com. Those are also two that are popular that have very competitive rates. And it's going to be up to you to take this information, to go into your research, and one, decide, is it worth my business to pay the fees, the transaction fees, to accept credit and debit cards? Will this help increase my sales when I'm outside of my business? And which um, mobile payment processor is going to be best for me. Let's start with PayPal. So PayPal's mobile payment processor is called PayPal here. All of these devices are going to work with Apple and Android devices. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, an Android phone, or tablet, it's going to work with all of them. You must be able to download an app for the device to work. So you're going to need to have an uh, internet connection on that device for it to work. So transaction fees are processed, processed each time you swipe a card or key in. So to use PayPal, you must have a PayPal account, but your customers do not, have, do not need to have a PayPal account. But for you to accept payments, you must have a PayPal account, and we're going to talk about that PayPal account here. This is what you want to pay attention to is the percentage in the transaction fee. So every time you swipe a card, regardless of the dollar value, 2.7% will be withheld by PayPal if you swipe that card. Now let's say you're trying to swipe a card, it won't work, you're actually trying to key in a credit card number, you're taking an order over the phone and you need to key it in. Those fees are 3.5% plus a 15 cent transaction fee. So when you swipe a card, there's not an additional fee like the 15 cents. But when you key it in, it's 3.5% and 15 cents. So um, I'm going to show you actually in just a second what the PayPal here looks like and how to hook it up on your device. So you can see all the additional features there that are offered by PayPal. PayPal will work as a almost a, just a point of sale system. So you can accept checks, you can scan them with PayPal funds being available in six business days. What this means is you take a picture of the check with your phone camera, you upload it through your PayPal here, and then PayPal will process that check and deposit the funds in your PayPal account within six days. You can also keep track of cash payments. If you're out, you can um, keep up like just like you have a cash store in your business, you can do that as well. You can create and send invoices. You can offer discounts if everything is 25% off for a day. PayPal makes it really easy in the mobile payment processor to apply that discount. You can accept tips, issue refunds, um, you can text or email receipts. So with PayPal, a signature is required for all transactions over $50. Under $50 is optional with PayPal. And I must mention if you're going to accept checks, Checks must be less than $1,000, so you can't take a check for $1,005. And in one month, you cannot oversee, you cannot um, have more than $3,000 of checks within a month to your account. To use PayPal here, you're going to need to have a PayPal account. I'm going to talk just a minute about PayPal because PayPal is one of the oldest and most popular payment forms online. It was first started back in 1999. PayPal um, came apart out of eBay. So when eBay was first started, PayPal is the only form of payment on eBay. It has since grown 
you can check out just about anywhere online with PayPal. There are a few large retailers like Amazon that does not accept PayPal. To show you how big PayPal is, last quarter in 2014, there was 161.5 million active accounts. Active means those that are accepting the payments, they are transferring money, they are actually using their PayPal account. So PayPal can track your online and mobile payments simultaneously. So if you have an online store and you use PayPal, then in your actual brick and mortar store you can use PayPal, and then when you're out and about you can use PayPal here. So PayPal can work as a point of sale system. Actually all of the mobile payment processors that we're going to talk about today can work as a point of sale system. Here's one thing with PayPal I like to explain to you when we talk about it is the money is not directly deposited in your bank account. PayPal acts as a bank now. Pay PayPal will try to issue a credit card and a debit card when you sign up and get an account with them. So if you run a credit card with PayPal and the payment is $40, that money is going to be held in a PayPal account until you log into your PayPal account and transfer those funds to your bank account or to your local bank. This transfer can take three to four days. So when you swipe a credit or a debit card with PayPal or use PayPal as your form of checkout, that money is not going to be immediately available to you in your bank account. It will be available to you in your PayPal account, but you then have to transfer it over to your bank account. So I just want to make sure that everyone understands that with PayPal. So if you do not have a PayPal account, the first thing you'll want to do is to sign up with PayPal. You can do a personal account or a business account. If you choose to do a business account, you will have to have a tax identification number or social security number, and you're going to have to confirm your bank account with PayPal. That's with any account. If you sign up with an individual, you'll have to use the last four of your social and your birthday. The more volume you do in transactions with PayPal, then your rates can actually get lower. So if you start doing tens of thousands of dollars in transactions with PayPal, they're going to come back and most likely offer you a lower rate or you can contact them for that. It's encouraged that if you're going to do more than $500 a month to sign up as a business with PayPal. This is not going to affect how much it costs or anything like that. So you can still sign up as a business for PayPal payment standard or you can choose to do the pro if you need those custom options. But I would encourage you, if you're a business, sign up as a business. It doesn't cost anything different, but you will have to have that tax ID number. Once you have a PayPal account, you can request a PayPal here. And that is the device that allows you to accept the credit and debit card payments. You can either sign up online at PayPal and request a PayPal here. Or you can go directly to your app store, whether that's the Apple Market, or I'm sorry, the App Store with Apple or the Market with Android. Actually, I think they've changed the name and I don't know what it is with Android. But you can see right there, it's the 2.7% um, when you swipe. And what's going to happen, even if you log in online, PayPal is going to ask you to put in your cell phone number and then they're going to text you a link to download the app. So you can do it either way with PayPal. You can do it online, or you can go ahead and go straight to the App Store and download the PayPal Here app. And right there you can see that's what the app, what it looks like. So now hopefully you can see me. When you request a PayPal Here, the device that allows you to run the debit cards, it's going to come in a box like this, or mine did a few months ago. Um, probably, I guess more than a few months ago, about a year ago. It takes, they say, about a week. I got mine in within a week, but I think um, PayPal actually tells you about 10 to 14 days. So just plan ahead if you're needing the PayPal here. Here's what it actually looks like. So you can see it's very small. You can see right there it has the slot, and that's how you accept the credit and debit card payments. So I'm just going to demonstrate here. I'm going to use my iPad, and then in a minute I'll use my phone. What you're going to do is you're going to plug in the device into your auxiliary port, like where you put your headphones, so you can see it right there. I'm going to pull up on my iPad here. And I already have the app downloaded on my iPad. 
So you can see right there, PayPal here. And I'm already signed up and I have it pulled up. So I'm going to plug in my card reader. You can see right there, it's recognizing that the device has been input. So it's very easy once you have that account created, you'll be able to swipe a card. And we're going to go more into it after we talk about Square, how, um, how to check someone out and um, how the different apps work. Okay, so now we're back to our PowerPoint and let's look at Square and discuss it. You're going to find there's a lot of similarities between Square and PayPal. So the card readers are free. So the little blue PayPal card reader I just showed you, it's free. They send you one for free. It does not cost anything. I did notice when I was in Best Buy over the weekend that you can actually buy these card readers. So if you don't have time to order one online, but you still want to take advantage of the mobile payment processors and you need one this weekend, you can buy them at retail locations. Just like PayPal, Square is going to work on any device. You've got to download the app for it to work. Transaction fees are going to be charged on every card that you swipe. So you can see I have a picture right there. and I don't know. I'm sure you've probably seen one of these. I'm seeing them a lot at restaurants, salons. Those that are in the service industry are using Square for their overall point of sale system. So you can see they actually have a checkout, a cash drawer there. They have an iPad stand, and then you actually run... Um, your credit card right there. So you can buy this for $99 from Square. Again, you can buy it at a uh, big box retailer as well. So you can use Square or PayPal in your store and when you're on the go and online. That's the great thing about these mobile payment processors. So I see I'm getting some questions over here in some chat box. That's great. Let's take a look at it real quick. Does paying with PayPal give some protection to me or to the customer paying if doing an online mail purchase? Yes, it does. And we're going to talk about that. We've got a slide at the end that's going to talk about security. And I'm going to encourage you to go out there and read on Square and PayPal. And I feel like I could do a whole presentation about security and how the security features work for both. So Square, it costs 2.75% per swipe. You will notice that this is a little bit more expensive than PayPal, but the key in rates are exactly the same. You can see what a Square looks like right there. So you can see all the features that are available on Square, just like you can on um, PayPal as well, the cash management feature. You can issue refunds, tips. Text or email receipts. You can accept payments offline, which is a great feature if you're out and about and you don't have a live internet connection. You can still accept these payments offline. One thing I like about Square is the customer feedback feature, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Also, inventory management. And then you can also send invoices, but with Square, it costs. It's free to send the invoice, but when the invoice is paid, you're still charged 2.75% which is also like PayPal. And then with Square, you can also order gift cards. You can customize these gift cards. And so that way you have gift cards available to your customers and they cost $1.50 per card. So on Square, um, a signature is required for transa transactions over $25. So PayPal, it was $50. Here's the, the difference between Square and PayPal, one of the big difference. When you run a card with Square and say you charge $40, that money goes directly into your bank account. It's not being held by Square the way it is with PayPal. That money goes directly into your bank account and will be available in one to two days. So if you're out, um, you're outside of your store or you're at a festival or a farmer's market and you do $200 in business that um, in one day, that money is going to be available to you in the bank account that you sync up with um, Square within one or two business days. Another great thing about Square that I was talking with the small business owner here just a few weeks ago is that they, they're keeping up with all of their inventory using Square. They run an online store and they have a storefront and then they also sell 
at festivals, they're able to inventory all of their items through Square. Let's say they sell five things in the store that day, then that's also going to reduce their inventory online by those five items. So it's also, um, you can use it as an inventory management system, and that is for all of these mobile payment processors we're going to talk about. Some are going to be a little different, a little more sophisticated than others, and that's something we're going to go in and take a look at with each one. So here's the square feedback I was mentioning. You can collect customer feedback, so when you scan someone's um, debit or credit card with your phone or with your tablet, a receipt can be text or emailed to them. So with Square, Square knows my card number and they know my email address. So anytime uh, someone takes a payment from me using Square, I'm automatically going to get my email. I choose to get my receipts emailed. And then also there's uh, a lot of businesses are taking advantage to track their customer behavior and get feedback about the customer's experience. This is a free service. So you can see right there, that's a picture. That's just an image I took offline that says Barton Street Deli. And it shows the smiley faces. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So this is an actual email that I got on my phone. It's a business I went to. Spent $33. Looks like back in September I had been saving this. And it asked me to rate my experience. Well, I chose the smiley face. It was a good experience for me. And then it asked you, tell us what we got right. Customer service, quality, wait time, selection, environment. So you can actually get feedback from your customers. And then also you can leave a comment. And Square allows you to directly respond to that customer. And it will also track how much money that customer is spending with you, how often they're coming, because they're able to match that with the card number and also the email or phone number where they receive their receipt. So this is a really neat feature that I like with Square where you can also get customer feedback. And this can help you with your customer service. So I just saw a comment with Karen, and this is something I didn't want to address as well too, that sometimes your cards do not read and you have to key them in. Yes, that is one of the negatives of using a mobile, a mobile payment processor is that your card reader might not read those cards that are really worn and you are going to have to pay that higher percentage. If you're not getting any cards to read, it is sometimes these card readers you do want to get a new one, order a new one, or pick up one that will uh, read the cards a little bit better. But yes, that is one of the negatives. I know some people's cards don't read. I've had those before and had to get new ones and then it costs you more when you have to key it in. So to sign up for Square, actually Square's web website is squareup.com. You can see the sign up there. Or you can download the app for Square and you can register that way. So you do not have to go to the website. You can go um, directly to the app. To sign up, you will need to provide the last four of your social and date of birth. You can sign up as an individual or a business. It's not going to matter. And I think this is something I failed to mention when we were talking with PayPal. What's going to happen is you have to link your bank account with PayPal and Square. Then they're going to make two small deposits into your bank account. These deposits are going to be like 19 cents and 23 cents. They're going to be very minimum amounts. Then, you have to log back into the app or go into the website and tell them how much these deposits were for. This is how they are confirming your bank account. Then they will withdraw those deposits as well. So this is how um, these services verify the bank account that they give you so that you can transfer your money back over to them. So this is what it's going to look like if you sign up online to get started with Square. It's very simple. I'm going to go through a series of screenshots. This is um, the best way I figured out that you could really see what the app looks like. And then I'm going to demonstrate it on my phone as well. So there you can see you download it from the App Store. That is what this app looks like. And so as soon as you download it and you open it up on your phone, you're going to be asked to create an account or sign in. If you already have an account, you'll want to sign in. So this is what it looks like, the Square app looks like on the phone. They are going to look a little bit different on a tablet. There when you first, um, your first option is a keypad there where you can um, type in any amount and charge it. 
The next option I have circled is going to the list. This is where you can go in and customize and type in each product that you have and it helps with that inventory management and to track your sales. You can see what you've sold, how much you've sold. So let's say right there I have a list of some, looks like um, grocery items from where I've used the app before to demonstrate and so let's say you want to add another item you'll just click edit it's very easy to add you can even upload a picture from your phone of that item so I could actually upload a picture of a bell pepper or strawberry jelly I could upload any of that you can see there that also Mississippi sales tax of 7% is already going to be added to the price this is optional you do not have to do that So you can see right there, I have a bell pepper, but there's three different prices for that bell pepper depending on the color. So you can really customize and you can charge different prices. So you can make these um, mobile payment processors, the platforms, the apps, work for you however you need them to. So it's very simple. It, does, but it is going to take, I'm not, it is simple, but it's going to take some time for you to use and to become familiar with the apps to learn how they work. So you can see right there, you, I've got yellow, green, and red. They're all different prices. So that when I click on bell pepper in that item list, I can then choose. Everything is tapped, so you will just tap your phone or tap your tablet, and I'm going to demonstrate that here in just a second. So you can see right here, I've added up several items, four different items I've tapped, and I've put there into, you can see I'm going to be charged $7.76. That's including tax. So all you do is you click charge when you're ready to check someone out. You're going to choose the method of payment. You can see credit or debit card, cash, that's if you're keeping up with your cash and have, um, have it tied to the cash drawer. Others where you can accept check and gift card with Square or you can invoice someone. And I've just got screenshots there of what it looks like. So I went ahead and I swiped the card, I just charged the dollar. You can see there you're asked to give a tip. I have it where you have to sign on all purchases, so I sign my name there. Once I click that I'm done signing, I can have my receipt emailed or text to me. And then as soon as I receive this payment, basically I just made a payment to myself, I got an email from Square saying that a dollar and four cents, that's my balance, and it will be deposited into my bank account. So you can see it's immediately you're going to know how much goes into your account. You're going to get an email. Then that last section, the little wheel gear, that is your settings. You can see up above there there's the recent activity. So it looks like I've used this in August and June the last time. If you click on settings, we're going to look at the public profile first. This is where you can put in your name. You can put in information about your business. You can upload a picture. And here's why it would matter. I actually received this this weekend. I was at a fast food restaurant in South Mississippi. And you can see right there, it's got their name, the phone number, how much that's um, spent. And then also, they have it where I can rate their customer service. So they're gathering customer feedback. You can see right there, you can change it. It's a signature if you want to require one or if you want to skip it under $25. If it's over $25 with Square, you have to get a signature over $50 with PayPal. With tax, you can name it. You can name it whatever tax you want to. I just put in Mississippi sales tax, 7%. You can come up with different taxes if you'd like. You can also do tipping. You can do smart tip amounts. Um, where it gives people the percentage 10, 15, 18%, you can change that. And then you also have that option to take all foreign payments where it's going to be stored and then when you have an internet service, it will be uploaded to Square. So I kind of got ahead of myself. I'm going to pull the back over so you can see me now. And I'm going to demonstrate what Square looks like. And I'm going to show it to you on my iPhone versus the iPad this time. So when I got my Square, and it came in a um, package like this. Again, it took about a week to come in. This is what Square looks like. 
Also with PayPal and Square, you get a sticker so that you can put it on your business door or hang it up. You can let people know that you do Square. So I've got my phone up here. You can see I've got the apps for all the payment processors I'm going to talk about. Again, you're going to plug in the device reader into that auxiliary jack right there. So you can see there it's on the edge of my phone. I've already got Square up. I'm going to pull it so it knows that I have I have I have connected the device. So here's the list of items that I had screenshots on. So let's say you're out somewhere and you want to ring someone up for these items. And if you can't see, I do apologize for it being fuzzy. This is one of the issues with trying to stream live. So I'm just going to click a few items and you see it. Um, oh, I chose cornmeal. I have to choose which one I want, three or five pounds. I'm going to add um, three pounds. So you can see right there my total is already 1230. You just click charge. You have the option. Credit or debit. And now I can swipe my card and take a payment. It's very simple. These have worked great for me. I've not had any trouble. So I've also cleared that out now since I actually didn't take the payment. It's very easy to go in and add and to change things. So here's that bell pepper I'm going to touch bell pepper, you can now see the three options that I showed you just with the screenshots as well. So that is Square and PayPal and I see there's been a lot of discussion going on while I was talking about Square. Um, Steph asked, PayPal, the personal or business, Square does not care. PayPal money goes into PayPal account, Square goes into your bank account, right? Then you move it over. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read and get caught up here. Right, so Karen's already using Square and she is very grateful for it because it's helped her eliminate some fees, which has um, obviously probably helped her increase her revenue and keep a little bit more money in her business. Do they charge an annual fee? No, not that I'm aware of. You can chart, you can sign up for different services with Square and with PayPal. So just like with PayPal, you can sign up with a more advanced option and that does cost you $30 a month. There are some of those same options available with Square if you go to their website. You can see additional features does cost uh, more money. But just to take basic payments like this with the Square, it does not cost anything but the transaction fees unless you choose or add on to some more. The more, um, if you're a business and you're doing a lot of transactions or between your online business and your store, you're taking in, I know with PayPal it said over $10,000 a month, then I think they'll look at lowering your transaction rates as well too, so that is an option. Okay, the sound went out there. Um, I'm going to move this mic off of me now. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Karen. Said no, but you can get additional features and pay for them. That is correct. So if you sign up for some additional things through PayPal or through Square or any of these, it is going to charge you more money. Now let's look at some of the other available um, mobile payment processors other than Square and PayPal. What is PayAnywhere.com? I've heard some good reviews on PayAnywhere.com. I've not used it. I must admit the way I have used PayPal and Square before. So one good thing um, about PayAnywhere, it's oh, you know what one um, hundredth of a percentage less than PayPal, so it's 2.69 percent per swipe. You can see that their keyed in rates are the same, but they do charge more per transaction fee. So with Square and PayPal, it's 15 cents, but PayAnywhere.com charges 19 cents. And these are just things that you want to pay attention to when you're trying to figure out which one's going to be best for you. The card readers are free with PayAnywhere.com and I have one that I will show you. Funds are deposited within one business day. So this is like where your money is immediately deposited within one business day. If you apply as a business, you do have to have a federal tax ID. If you apply as an individual, you do not. 
So I know this um, screen might be a little hard to read because I took this straight off of their website. If you have a storefront and you choose to use Pay Anywhere, it's 1.69% swipe, and then there's the keyed in rate, and there's also a basic service fee. But you're using this, you can use this online, in the store, and on the go at their storefront. So you can see how the fees vary, and you really have to pay attention to them. But just to use it as a mobile payment processor on the go, it's 2.69%. And here's what it looks like. One thing I like that it's on a, a lanyard so you don't lose it. You can hang it around your neck and then plug it in. But this platform, the app, it works just like the others. You can set it up and make it um, accessible for you and to carry your products. The last one we're going to talk about is Intuit Go Payment. So if you're already using QuickBooks with your business, you can get Intuit Go Payment, and it will sync with QuickBooks. So when you scan, if you sell a product, it will sync with QuickBooks. That might be an option that interests you. You can see that they have different rates and different fees. I would encourage you, if you're using QuickBooks, to look at this. If you're not, then I would probably recommend staying with PayPal or Square or PayAnywhere.com. common questions that I've received before and if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat window. So can multiple card readers be used at the same time for the same business account? Yes they can for PayPal and Square and the others. They each have some different rules some ways that you have to do it and sign up but yes you can use multiple card readers at the same time. So if you're out making deliveries and you need to take someone's payment but then you still have a storefront then you can have multiple card readers available. If we have anyone that is a fruit and vegetable grower listening, then there is a special program through the USDA that is administered through the Mississippi Department of Agriculture and Commerce where you can receive a, an iPhone, a receipt printer, and a card reader. And that card reader will accept EBT cards and credit and debit cards. So you cannot currently be signed up to accept SNAP cards to participate in this program. And this is only for fruit and vegetable growers. I know that we were marketing this webinar to farmers markets, so I hope we have some that are out there listening. If you want to learn more about this program, there are some workshops coming up. And I would ask that you contact Kirby Green at the Mississippi Department of Ag and Commerce. You can see that the transactions and the swipe rates are much lower with this program. And so um, they're going to do some workshops. I went to them last year. It's a good program, something definitely for fruit and vegetable growers to consider so that you don't miss out on those transactions of people that only carry credit and debit cards. And we saw what a high percentage that was at the beginning of the presentation. So again, there's another type of mobile payment processor that's available for a specific industry here in Mississippi. Now let's talk about tying these mobile payment processors into your website or if you're considering getting a website and selling items online. I'm first going to say that PayPal is recognized as a universal checkout system now. There are very few websites where you cannot use PayPal. Most of them are usually large big box retailers. Amazon, you cannot use PayPal. But most places accept PayPal online as a method. So that's one reason um, you might want to go with the PayPal here if you're looking to take payments on the go because you can then also use it with your website and in your store as well. I know many small businesses, you are tied into a contract with your current payment processor and they've got you in a contract for several years. Um, I've talked to many people and you get higher rates and I understand that uh, is an issue and if you're looking to build a website as well, I would encourage you to contact your local payment processor to see what they can do if you build a website and what you will have to do. So there's multiple steps to that. I'll be glad to work with you and kind of help you um, go through that process. I don't want to get into it too much on the webinar because we could spend all day talking about the different payment processors. 
But then if you choose to build a template-based website and you build it your own through Weebly, Wix, Shopify, or BigCommerce, and we're going to talk about all of these in the last webinar on May the 14th. So if you want to build a website, make sure you plan to attend on May the 14th. Then these different website builders only allow you to use specific payment processors. So if you want to look at that template-based website builder and see which payment processors they allow. I will say they do all allow PayPal. And then some are going to give you more options than other. So I just saw a comment, Shopify accepts PayPal or Stripe. Yes, that is correct. Stripe is a very popular, Authorize.net are very popular online payment processors. So we'll talk more about that on May the 14th when we talk about building your own website and e-commerce website. So let's talk about security. We had a question at the beginning. If you go and look on Square, PayPal, PayAnywhere.com, there will be a section about security. You can read and learn what these platforms will do to offer you protection and how they also protect the buyer. So there's fraud protection with each of the mobile payment processors. You do want to research with each company. It does differ. One thing you can do is always require signature on purchases. They're also going to tell you what to look for when you accept a credit or debit card and how to tell a fraudulent card or someone who might be using one. So this is something we have to consider now security. We've seen in the past year huge corporations get hacked. We know that people are out there that are scamming and using fraudulent cards. And so you just want to educate yourself as much as possible so that you want to choose to um, see a form of ID to match up with the card before you take it. But I would encourage you, it's all in the, the user terms of an, and the user terms or terms of agreement for each company. I know these documents are not fun to read. They're very long. That's the reason I'm not going into detail with them today. If you have specific questions, I will be happy to help you answer those. But please pay close attention. You can search on all of the websites about um, what their protection and fraud clauses are. I know that was not a specific answer and probably what you're looking for, but it does depend on each company. So I gave you a lot of stats and a lot of numbers at the beginning of this presentation. These are the articles where we found a lot of those numbers. It's got links to the sources. And then we are right at 12.45. I did good on this webinar. That'll leave us about five minutes for questions, and that'll leave you time to interrupt and get back to work and end your lunch break. So you can see our upcoming webinars in March are about crowdfunding. April, we're going to talk about online customer service. And then May, as I mentioned, website design. So if you have any questions about these webinars or questions from today, feel free to contact me. I will be posting a copy this exact presentation will be posted on YouTube. You can see our YouTube channel there. If you want to stay up to date to learn what else we have going on, I encourage you to follow the Extension Service Center for Technology Outreach, which is where I work, and the MSU Extension Service.